there we go. All right. Well, thank you very much. Um, where I am, it's it's morning. So good morning, good evening, wherever you are. I'm very happy to be in this in this event. Uh, my name is Antia Lamas Linares, and I'm the CTO of Spectral, which is a, a startup. And I'm going to talk today a little bit about about our, our trajectory as a as a company, but also my own trajectory. I'll, I'll mix the two things uh, a little bit. So first of all, a little bit of a clarification. I just uh, I already messed up my own introduction by saying that I was the CTO of Spectral. In fact, what happens is that we have two companies. So Spectral is based in Singapore. Our company eventually comes from a, it's a spinoff from academia, from uh, the group of Alex Ling in, at the National University of Singapore and the Center for Quantum Technologies there. And there I am actually the chief quantum scientist, whatever, whatever that is. But we also have a U, uh, U.S. company and that is Spectral Quantum Technologies. And you can see the family resemblance, resemblance there in, in our, in our queue. And I am the CTO of of our US company. The US company addresses mainly the US market, but also government sector uh, kind of thing, since it's very hard to do that kind of business when you're not a, a company based in a particular country. All right, and I'm based in Austin, Texas. All right, so what do we do at Spectral? Uh, so I thought I should clarify that just from the start. And it's very, very simple. This audience will understand immediately. We do entanglement in space meaning that we, we build very uh, compact and very robust, very bright entanglement sources. So entangled pair sources uh, and put them in really small packages that we can then put on satellites. And in fact, our most recent satellite is currently orbiting on a low earth orbit. Uh, just, you know, comes around every 90 minutes or so. And it's it's measuring bell inequalities and doing all those fun things. So so we have an entanglement source in space. Uh, now why do we why do we have entanglement sources in space and why do we care and why have we formed a company around it? Well, again, this audience will understand. Uh, quantum key distribution is an obvious uh, first application of of entanglement distribution, but also looking forward, uh, obviously quantum networks. The moment you want to network your quantum devices, you you need to distribute entanglement and do things like that. And also slightly more esoteric things like time transfer. And that is actually clock synchronization on a global scale. It turns out that you can use uh, quantum technologies for that as well. We're very excited about that. So that's, that's our company. That's what we do. And how did this happen, at least for me personally? How did I get there? Well, this is what essentially you would find in my LinkedIn page in Aya. I'm from Spain. I, I got an undergraduate degree in physics at the University of Santiago. Uh, then I did an, a master's in applied optics at Imperial College London. I proceeded to do a, a DPhil in physics, that's a PhD everywhere else, uh, at the University of Oxford. Uh, and then a postdoc at UCSB in California. Then I moved to junior faculty as an assistant professor at the National University of Singapore. And then we got, we wrote a white paper and got a, a lot of money to set up the Center for Quantum Technologies in Singapore. And I became a principal investigator there. Uh, then I moved to the US and I actually moved to Nest Boulder to work in super compute, uh, superconducting detectors. Um, I stayed there for a couple of years and then I moved to Texas to Austin and I became a research associate at the Texas Advanced Computing Center, which is I think it's the largest non-government supercomputer in the world. It's it's a very large center. It's like the fifth largest in the world computer. Um, and about a year and a half ago, I became the chief quantum scientist at Spectral. I joined Spectral. So that's you know that's the neat and tidy story. You can see I've been working in in quantum technologies uh, for around twenty years now. Uh, so I've been I did my PhD already in making entanglement sources so you know i've been in this for a long time but of course that's that's not really how things work right that's that's not the reality that's that's what it's in my linkedin profile the reality is a lot messier and i thought i would describe for this audience some of those some of that actual path of how i ended up where i am so i started the same way i started in the last slide you know i got my undergraduate degree in physics 
And then I tried to do a PhD at Imperial College, but they didn't want me for a PhD. They, it wasn't the right fit. So I did a, a master's in applied optics. And then I moved to, I did my final project in Oxford and they offered me to do a PhD there. Uh, the catch was that there was no lab. We were setting that up from scratch. It was just me and my supervisor. So I set up a new a lab. And then my supervisor, my, my PhD advisor got hired at UCSB. So the whole group moved and I set up a new lab. And then somehow he ran out of money. Things got a bit tight. So I had to leave a little bit in a hurry. And I got the opportunity to go to Singapore and set up a new quantum optics group. They didn't have any quantum optics. They wanted to get into quantum information. And I got that opportunity. So I set up a new lab. You're starting to see a, a, a thread here. Um, then we got that big grant, as I mentioned before, and, and we got, we went to new facilities. So I set up a new lab. And then, uh, my, my partner, now husband, uh, got a position in Austin and we were doing the Singapore Austin commute for a while. That wasn't working so well. So I got the opportunity to go to NIST Boulder, which was super exciting. And the Boulder, Boulder Austin commute is actually much better. Uh, so I spent a couple of wonderful years in, in Boulder, uh, the group of Sewunam working on these superconducting detectors. Uh, but then, you know, we had a family and, and then I moved to Austin because we wanted to be all together. Um, and there was a little bit of an interlude there, a couple of years. I was looking for a job, but it wasn't a very good time for that. I got really bored. I made a LinkedIn profile for my dog and she got a lot more hits than I did. Uh, so that was a little discouraging. Anyway. I decided to, I got an opportunity to join the Texas Advanced Computing Center at the High Performance Computing Group, and and I decided to change fields. I, I went like, okay, this is something I like too, and and I went for it, or so I thought. So I, I joined TAC, and I started working in HPC, but that was just about the same time as quantum computing was really starting to get in the public consciousness, uh, you know, Google had made investments, Microsoft had made investments, and suddenly people in the HPC community were actually paying attention to that. And suddenly I was the closest thing they had to a quantum computing specialist. So so I became the, the local quantum computing person. Um, that was great. We, we did some things there. Um, but eventually uh, the opportunity to join Spectral arose, and that was just perfect because it that is really my area of expertise, quantum optics, entanglement generation, and so on. So about a year and a half ago, I joined uh, Spectral. And you guessed it, I'm setting up a new lab uh, here in Austin. Um, yeah, and that picture there is just my excuse to show you a picture of my favorite experiment where we did entanglement distribution in the Grand Canyon. So anyway. Why Spectral? What is special about our company or why do we think it's the right moment to do what we're doing? Well, we are at a very interesting confluence of three, three trends. So one you're all aware of is, is the quantum technologies trend. You know, this in the last five years or so, this really has taken off. People are super interested with the computing aspects, the networking aspects, the sensing aspects. And that's super exciting. On the other hand, we have a uh, an emerging trend on the space uh, industry. And that is, they call it new space, in fact, and they contrast it to old space. So old space is the usual things you hear about where NASA or somebody sends up a spacecraft. And by the time that spacecraft makes it into orbit or whatever, the technology is is super outdated. It's It's 10 years old because it takes that long to space qualify and have redundancy for all the elements and so on. And it's incredibly expensive and very, very time consuming. And that is changing. Now, people are going to, towards a model where they, they launch small satellites, they launch them fast. Sometimes they fail. They're not as thoroughly, thoroughly tested as the old stuff, but it, 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 it proceeds at a much uh, faster pace. We also have another thing that is happening right now, which is optical communications in space. For a long time, this was conceived to be possible, but not really thought to be practical. And nowadays it is. So there's an incredible industry development in optical communications in space, both in the old space industry and in the new space. So these things merge perfectly with what we are interested in spectral, which is quantum communications and distributing uh, 
entanglement and, and quantum states. So this is this is perfect, right? It looks it looks like a great confluence, and that's that's what we thought. Now there's the reality, right? The reality is that you have to look for funding for these things. Now, if you think of, you know, when, when people want to refer to the most esoteric scientists they can they can uh, think of, they'll say, oh, it's a quantum physicist. Or maybe they'll say it's rockets, you know, this is rocket science. So we are right in the middle or right at the intersection of those two things. And the thing with funding is that you don't just need money. You need a lead investor. You need an investor that takes ownership of the project. And then there are other investors that might join the round. And the problem is that that doesn't intersect, intersect so well. So space investors are scared of quantum there. If they don't know what that is, it's, it's, it's very different from what they're used to. On the other hand, you have quantum investors or quantum focused investors and they think space is hard and it takes forever and it's incredibly expensive. So a lot of them want to invest, but it's very hard to get uh, somebody to lead. So that's not great. Uh, we encountered this in our seed round, which we got yeah, around a year and a half ago. And we're currently in the process of raising our Series A and we keep running into this, which is that that problem with finding leads in investment. Um, so that is something definitely that I that I learned about. I didn't know this aspect of of the startup uh, ecosystem. So let me tell you something about our team. We are we're a small company. We're about fifteen people, um, with about an even split between space focused people and quantum focused people. Uh, obviously, very academic heavy. We come from an academic group, but. But you know, there's there's engineers and there's quantum physicists and there's syst space systems engineers and and all sorts of things like that. We also have a a couple of people that have spent most of their career in industry, in the space industry specifically. So it's it's a pretty diverse team in 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 many senses. Uh, so some final thoughts. Um, Team building, this is something that is surprising. Succeeding in this quantum space is going to require really a special kind of team. You, you need a quantum people to talk to space people that is pretty, pretty hard. And it, they're very, it's, it's a very hard team to assemble, to assemble. So that is, that is something that is, it requires a special ability among the team members to communicate and be patient with each other. We're casting as wide a net as possible to capture this kind of talent. Hiring is very hard. And hiring outside the existing clubs is even harder, as you might all be aware of. So I'm going to put a little plug here that we are hiring. Um, so, you know, I have a wide audience here. And if you want to talk to me, just ping me in LinkedIn and so on. And thank you very much. Going to try to get back to that screen where I can see the chat and so on. Anyway, any any questions that I can take or anything else? I'm trying to scroll through the through the questions, but I probably won't be able to to see them. Anyway, thanks a lot. If anybody wants to uh, ping me on LinkedIn just to talk or whatever, just please go ahead. It's been super fun and I look forward to the rest of the event. Thank you.